in management, we say that what's more important than strategy and it's culture. So culture would always eat strategy up, right? So in my opinion, why people struggle, no matter how great the strategy is, is the culture that they have. So for example, um, if you don't have a culture for certain routines, I don't even want to call them routines, I want to call them something deeper, rituals, because a deeper form of routine is ritual. So no matter what you hear, if there is no routine that helps you convert it, so for example, are you writing down stuff? Or you just heard it? That's culture. You don't have a culture for writing stuff down. So you think that you always remember. How many times do you even log into an app and you don't even remember to write down the password? You assume you remember it. Next time, you're doing forgot password. <laughs> right? So culture. Uh, so I always, and I'm trying to sort this out even my four-year-old, that you have to have certain underlining baselines. So all these things called strategy and stuff, they're all softwares. The main thing is the hardware. So there's no need for software without a hardware. You, there's no, you don't have no, no need for a Windows anything or an iOS if you don't have a hardware. There's no iOS without Apple, right? There's no Android without a phone, right? So the hardware is your routines, right? So writing down stuff, meditation when you wake up. I always ask simple questions these days when I'm interviewing people. And I say stuff like, so what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Just something as simple as what's the first thing you do Right, as simple as that first thing you do determines how you live your life for the rest of the day. For me, reliability is culture. Right, so I don't know if anybody knows that Nigeria, as much as we don't want to talk about it because it looks tribal, every tribe has something they're known for. So we say Igbos are ambitious, nobody wants to argue that. Right, we like money, we you know, Yorubas are a vibe. Right, Yorubas are life for the party, Yorubas can chop life, Yorubas are happy people, Yorubas are accommodating. Am I right with all these things I'm saying? That there's a reason why most of us are in Lagos. It's only Lagos can provide that, and it's cultural that Yorubas are open. I mean, you can go to a Yoruba party uninvited, and you will eat food. <laughs> so why people don't deliver great strategy is the underlining dysfunctionality of their culture, which have reduced to something as simple as routines and rituals. So everybody that must drive this thing must drive routines. So don't fix strategy. Fix yourself first. If you can sell or you have a system in your company, you're talking about system, you have a system in your company whereby you can sell, right? Sales will solve problems f for you that not having money created. And sales is a skill, it's not an anointing. So if it's a skill, that means it is learnable. When I use the word skill, that means uh, within the context of that, that means there's a lot of repetition in it. So there's a lot of boring things in sales, right? It is a high income skill. Whether your product is great, it doesn't matter. If nobody knows about it, as if your customers, if customers don't know that a customer that a product exists. It doesn't exist in their world. True. And if your product and my product does not exist in the world of the people that can pay us, their money cannot exist in our bank accounts. That's the first other consequence. And if their money does not exist in our bank accounts, somebody's child will grow hungry tonight. I don't know if I'm making sense to anybody. Great. So, like he's talked about culture here, the person must see selling as a prime. You must, your, comp, your business should be a sales company that happens to sell software. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense. That's interesting. Yeah, the labeling. I've done training for law firms in London. Why? Because now they are seeing themselves as a media business that happens to sell legalese. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I'm making sense. So, the first thing first is that you must embrace, you must label yourself that we are a marketing business, but we happen to sell chemicals. I don't know if I'm making sense. That is the first thing. The problem with one business owner is that there is this shame. It's there. I always ask people, who shame help? <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't make sense to anybody. So, the reason why you have a great product and you are not selling is because you need to accept it first that this thing is important. If you can sell, you'll be oversubscribed. 
I don't think you heard me or I'll say it again. Hey. If you can sell, you have a waiting list for your product. Brother Shaggy is a good salesman. That's why I cannot even send him any DM anymore. He tries to send him DM. Can't send him DM. Why? He's directing that to his YouTube page because he makes more money from his YouTube page. Brother Shaggy is a better salesman than uh, Mufasa. Two dead notes. That's why they're always closing his page. He will be announced that we should come and follow him again. If you close Brother Shaggy's page today, his YouTube AdSense is making money. I interviewed Stephen Dokwe. He makes $10,000 on YouTube AdSense. Why do you think that the freeze will make controversy? He said, come to the YouTube channel. Because as you are going there, he's, he's a good salesman. If at any point in time, you are no longer believing in the vision, I'd say you should just close it there. So as, but as long as your conviction is still there, I think this is going to work. This is going to work. Keep going at it because, and I had written an article on LinkedIn one of the days about at what point do you actually give up? And then I now went back and I was thinking about this thing. And then I remind, I remember them, is it Thomas Edison that invented the light bulb? Yes. That is 999 yes. times before the 1000th time and then he got what he was looking for. Okay, so um, finally, before I, I, <laughs> I pass the mic. Um, is what I said um, earlier that uh, at any point where in your gut, because I, I hold on to this thing they call gut feeling, mm. I feel like if you can really tap into it, so many mistakes, and I'm speaking from personal experience, there have been many occasions where my mind told me to do something and I disregarded it, and almost immediately I regretted it. Mm. So, I'm just speaking from my own experience. It might be different for you or other people, but I'm speaking based off what I've experienced as a person. So, that's why I'm going to say and stress on, if at any point in time, you feel like you no longer want to do this, and every day you wake up, you're just angry. You know, today you can have that feeling, and then you wake up tomorrow, and you're happy to do it. Yeah. But if consistently for like a month, you are like, I don't want to do this thing again. Please drop it and do something else. I'm Kemeshi Samuel, co-founder and chief operating officer at First Founders Inc. We are a venture studio. And um, amazing panel we had here today um, at the event. We discussed so many things from sales to marketing. And I think what really stru uh, stuck with everyone that attended here is why grit is important as an entrepreneur and why it's important for you to not give up. So um, very often as entrepreneurs, we, we don't get to talk about these things as much as we should. But that's why gatherings like this, thanks to Connect Nigeria, enables us to have these difficult conversations with ourselves. And not just only encourage one another, but also um, network really and build those connections that we need to take our businesses to the next level. So definitely I'll be here next month to attend the next um, Connect Nigeria uh, event. So yeah, it's been amazing. Tonight's event was absolutely amazing because um, it's the end of the year and we're planning for the following year, next year, 2024. And the topic was absolutely on point. You know, the, we talked about strategy and marketing and sales, which is a big thing for any organization. Um, so it's, like I said, it's really amazing because it's helped in my thinking for uh, planning for next year.